What is up team? Chuck with Traders War Room and I'm back at you with another video. Man, listen, we had a killer fire market session today and I hope you were along with us for the journey, man, because if you were, you got into some great trades and made a killing. But right now I need you to hit that like, share, and subscribe button and I need you to come along with us on this journey, man. Listen, inside the description is all sorts of tidbits and tools to make you a better and more successful trader. The goal here at TWR is to be better prepared today than we were yesterday, and I think we are hitting that goal out the park. Now, if that sounds good and you're ready to rock with us, then all I got to say is follow me and let's go to war. Traders War Room wants to remind the viewer that all the content on this channel is for entertainment and education purposes only. You're responsible for every decision you make. Have fun, be cautious, but always go to war. You know how we rock it here, man. We got the TWR buzz report. Let's talk about what's hot and what's not in the stock market. All right, team, let's talk about the markets, okay? The Dow in the green, NASDAQ was down, and S&P was green, all right? The 10-year bond yield jumped up a little bit, so you saw a lot of volatility in the market today. Overall, there was some movers and shakers, but not a lot of things moved in the direction that bulls wanted to go. All right, here's your market movers and shakers. All right, most active CEI, man. We've been talking about that for weeks now. SESN saw a lot of good movement on that one. That one be sparking some interest, so I'm going to pay attention to that a little bit. Wish, you know I love me some Wish, man. It's getting to December and Christmas time, so it's time to pay attention to Wish and pins. Man, we hit a rocket ship to the freaking moon today with pins, okay? We entered in at 40 cents, and we killed it, man. This thing ran all the way to $7.65. I hope Hope you guys are on the TWR Discord because that's where all the information comes to. And man, if you guys were in on that, you rocked it like I did, man, we made a killing. Anyways, top gainers, HX, that's in the financial sector. We're paying attention to that, okay? SHPW, that had a lot of movement today. We're going to pay attention to that as well. And top losers, BBIG, one of those that we like, man. But what goes up must come down and we need to pay attention because it might be at a bottom level where we can spike back up a little bit on some of the short sales. GRVI, that was a ticker that we had a couple weeks ago. Definitely interested in that again for a jump up. Here's your sector performance. I want you guys to pay attention to that five day level. Listen, I don't care what it does in one day. I like to see trends, man. And in five days, everything is on a green up and up, okay? With Infotech losing today the battle, okay? But overall in a five day period, Infotech, consumer discretionaries and materials are up. So what does that mean? Well, as we close out this week and go into next week, we're paying attention to consumer staples, utilities and healthcare, okay? Because they've been at the bottom of the barrel this past five days. And here we got futures and orders filled by Fidelity. Now remember, futures are a glimpse into what possibly could be. It's not set in stone and we use them as just a guide to start strategizing what type of plan we're gonna have in the next day of the market. Now these orders filled by Fidelity customers, the Fidelity is one of the biggest banks out there and as a broker, things of that nature. I guarantee you, if you got a different broker or a different bank, they have similar orders filled by the big whales and things. And so what we're looking at here is we noticed that Invax had a pretty high buy to sell ratio, okay? BITO, a lot of buying, less selling. Tesla, kind of 50 50. PayPal, again, a lot of buying, less selling. Pins, because of the run up, you got a lot of people putting some sell pressure. So that's something we're going to watch tomorrow and see if we can capitalize on a high run up on pins and then catch it on the downward because we made a killing on the up. We need to try to get it on the down as well. And we're also paying attention to some AMC, man, because AMC loves to run towards the end of the week, but also it's been riding a little higher than it has been for the past couple of weeks. So we're paying attention to that because we might be able to catch a good dip off of a spike and make some money on the way down. All right, two of the stories that are interest us, so we're gonna pay attention to them. Tesla beats quarter three revenue estimates, but supply chain problems impact the factories. So I'm gonna leave this here, I'm gonna let you guys read it, but basically it doesn't matter. If Tesla does good on earnings and does good on things like that, if the future outlook of it is dwindled with, you know, supply chain things and, you know, growth potential and things of this nature, investors aren't gonna get in long term. So we're gonna keep seeing that short term volatility with spikes and dips, spikes and dips. 
And here's an interesting one I like, man. U.S. trading partners urge China to liberalize further, okay? I'm going to leave this here again so you can read this on your own. But why do we care about China? Well, man, a lot of Chinese stocks and Chinese investors are invested into our American stocks, American company, okay? With this global economy thing that we went on, you know, a few years back, man, we really started opening up. But China is heavily invested in our particular stock games and companies that we have. So we all know that China stocks are volatile, man. We'll see them. They'll jump up super quick and then they'll drop super fast. Okay. So if you're one of those that likes to play those Chinese stocks, man, hey, more power to you, but just be cautious. Okay. I like to ride the wave up. I like to sell as it's going up so that you're not caught off guard and we're always securing profit. All right, I know you guys want to go over this, so let's take a look at some more recent trades and see what we got cooking for the rest of this week. All right, so you all want to hear about it, so let's talk about pins today, okay? Check out the red line. That's our bottom level support, right? And that blue line is our top level uh, resistance. Now, what I want you to pay attention to is that we shot up drastically today, right, on some news with you know potential paypal wants to acquire uh, pinterest at 70 dollars a share and stuff like that okay look all i know is this thing just skyrocketed up and we had a great call come in at 8 47 this morning my time right i alerted you guys i got into the contract like i always do man i'm in these and riding them out with you guys we got in at 40 cents our target was 65 cents and the stop loss was 20. And we started to see a little bit of room of it going up and then it started dropping a little bit. And all of a sudden I started getting a whole bunch of blow ups and stuff saying, saying, Chuck, man, what's going on? This thing just bottomed out and everything like that. And I was like, hold tight, hold tight, man. This volatility is going to work in our favor, man. And it's like, if things look kind of wonky, well, there's a reason why it's looking wonky. And then all of a sudden, and then boom, man, right there, it hit, dude. Look at that long candlestick, man. I like to call it a volatility stick, okay? $7.65 was the high, dude. Killer monster play, man. Big shout out to everyone that made a killing on this play. Listen, I was able to sell in the $5, $4, $3, and a couple last minute riders in the $2. Killer monster play, congrats to everyone, man. You guys got the heads up right straight from the horse's mouth, man. TWR, we're doing something special. Now, for some of you that are trying to think, hey, maybe I want to ride this training thing. Hey, this thing might go up. I want you to look at those two orange lines right there, okay? That's the last gap from when it gapped down the last time, okay? You know, gaps tend to fill themselves up. It hasn't filled yet. It could go and fill up this remainder of this week. I don't know. But if you notice that small little dotted orange line right behind the closing line, that's an alert because I'm telling you guys, if it closes below that little alert line, we're looking at a huge sell-off before we see another rise up. And I'm going to kill this thing with some puts, dude. So that's my trigger point right there. And it's about at like 61.50, right? If this thing closes on a five-minute chart below the 61.50, I'm thinking puts for the day or at least for a two-leg run down before it skyrockets back up, okay? So definitely pay attention. We're looking at this one for tomorrow as a, another trade, but we're definitely going in cautious because this thing's going to have tons of volatility with it. All right. And so let's look at a play that was a killer play last week, man. Killer play. And then we swung it on it this week and man, it's just been a disappointment. Okay. But I do have hopes for this thing. I got two orange lines right there and that's a dip line or a gap line from where it closed on Friday and opened up on Monday, okay? And it's just been downhill since then. But man, I think we've hit bottom because it dropped down to that 169.20 area and it dropped down below the 170 area and then it just keeps jumping up, man. Three days is a charm. It can't stay down forever, man. Disney's too popular, too much money flowing in, too much volume. Dude, this thing's got to go up, okay? And so I do think that it is in the realm of hitting $172, if not $174, man. When Disney runs, we could see definitely easy a 3 to $5 jump in Disney, especially if we got volume and a lot of buying pressure. So I'm still bullish on this. I don't think we're going to gap up as hard all the way up to that 181 area. But man, I think that we're going to close out the week strong with Disney. And I'm still bullish on this. That's why I still am in my play and I'm about to show you it right now. 
So there's our first Disney play. We did that last week and it made a killing on the day that we did it. But of course, I wanted a little bit more or I thought I was going to go a little bit more. And I did trim off a little bit because we hit $2 on this particular trade last week, I think on Friday. But I still got about 50% of my investment running and riding on this one. And we are definitely a lot lower than $0.28 cents entry point. But and I still think this is possible to come roaring back in the next two days with a lot of volume and a lot of buying pressure, which I think Disney is just aching to give. And there's our current one that we got in most recently this week, the 177.5 call. Now, listen, this one's down significantly as well, but I have strong conviction. And I'm going to ride these out till the end, okay? Especially with some of the monster trades that we made last week, you know, with Goldman Sachs and Microsoft and a few other ones. And then the monster play on Pinterest. I'm not really worried about this one expiring you know, worthless. Now, for people that this was the only trade they went in or they went in way too deep and stuff, man, I feel for you guys and you guys have to do your risk tolerance. So my suggestion to you is if you get anything close to profit or you hit green and it goes up a little bit, man, consider selling and taking your money and going for another day. Disney will be another trade that we can do over and over and over again. But for me, I'm going to ride this out and I promise you if this thing doesn't hit this week, it's going to hit in the near term probably next week. I'll probably end up buying a couple more contracts out next week to try to hit it maybe a little bit closer to the target point but definitely i think we're going to see some fireworks closing out this week in disney i just got a feeling man so we'll see if i'm right on the friday video Now listen, Pinterest and Disney, that has our full attention tomorrow, okay? Those are the big ones. But we got some other trades that we're in that could possibly move and make some great jumps as well. So we're going to pay attention to those plus these other ones that, we, that got our attention. And I need to share the charts with you so we can see what we got in a game plan for tomorrow. And here's the last minute alerts that I posted out to the premium members on TWR and some of the other servers that I'm with, man. And these are the ones I'm rocking with tomorrow, man. Facebook, I'm thinking we're going to get a little dip and stuff. And I hear a lot of bullish sentiment on Facebook, but man, I think that they're going to have some troubles with this legal issue that they got going on. And I just think that we're primed to see a little bit more dip before we see it rip, okay? PayPal, man, I'm liking what I'm seeing with PayPal, man. The chart is nice. I think they got a little bit of go. And I I think we're going to see some fireworks to close out this week and eat man eat took a hitting on some certain things okay as far as you know the food chains and supply issues and things of that nature and i'm betting that they're going to go down a little bit i think that they got a, a little bit more to go down and i'm betting on them going down closing out the week so those are my three big plays that i'm swinging into tomorrow looking to sell at the bell early during the volatility where the market's trying to decide what direction is going up or down and here's what I'm seeing with Facebook. Now, like I said, Facebook's tricky, right? But it has so much market cap that we don't need it to move very much, okay? And so all we need this to do at the bell to make this put worth the risk is we need to have it dip a little bit from this current level, man. If we dip a little bit at an opening bell, we'll be able to knock it out of the park and get, get our money, okay? So definitely paying attention to Facebook. I do think that it has a lot of room that it could go up, but I think we're going to come back a little bit down. We're going to test that area right below the $340 area, and I think that's where we're going to make our money on this put. All right, here's PayPal, right? Now, PayPal took a beating today, okay? It dipped way far down, but it doesn't like that bottom level, man. PayPal doesn't like to be held down, man. So I think we're going to see it start to creep back up, man. And like I said, there's a lot of people interested in this particular stock. PayPal is huge, and I think we're going to have a winner come to market bell tomorrow, and we're going to catch it riding on some good momentum upwards. And eat, man. Eat. I'm betting that this thing dips a little bit further and then, bam, we're going to cash out and make our money on this one, okay? This one, I think it's got probably a couple days that it's going to go down because there was just some really bad news as far as eat was concerned. And you see in pre-market or after hours, it's not even up barely anything, okay? So I think when the market opens, it might shoot up just a little bit before it just dumps down and that's when we're going to sell out on our put.
And listen, I tell you guys all the time, okay? You're only as strong as the team that you go to war with, man. And here at Traders War Room, not only is our direct family that is in our server, and we're rocking it hard, and man, we're going to battle every day, but we got a market coalition out there. And I want to share a couple servers with you that I post in as well. You probably see me posting over there, but if you haven't, you need to check them out as well. Show love at TWR, but we also got to show love to our brothers in arms so that we can keep this market coalition cracking and always kick down the doors and go attack, conquer, and destroy that enemy. That's the stock market. First up, my boy Brendan, man, over at Dedicated Investors. Hey, man, Brendan and I, we're rocking it hard, and he got a couple guys over there, Crazy and Machete, man. We're doing our things every single day, putting out good content, man. So I hope you rock with me at TWR, but I also hope you check him out and get some great learning potential over there on that server as well. And I'm sure you know who this guy is, man. I don't need to introduce him. He has tons of followers on YouTube and everything, and they have given me a home over there on the Chris Sane Discord, okay? So big shout-out to Chris Sane. You probably see me over there, Chuck Fu, trading, killing it, and doing our thing over there. But also, remember, don't forget about home. And this is home, y'all. So I hope you guys all come over to the TWR Discord and check us out. And don't forget about the Market Coalition, man. We are one big happy home. And I don't care which one you're on. I hope you're on mine. But I don't care which one you're on as long as you're out there and you're growing, sharing, and learning together, man. And we're all making money together at the end. Remember, Traders War Room, we look at the stock market like it's a war zone. The stocks and the sectors, those are our battles. And we do it together as a team, man. We are kicking in doors. We're taking names. And we're attacking, conquering, and destroying every single day man the end goal and i tell you this and i truly mean this is to be better prepared today than we were yesterday and we do that through a community of like-minded investors learning growing and sharing together now if that sounds good and you're ready to rock it man then all i got to say is follow me and let's go to war together